Hello nerds and nerdettes, welcome back to the channel where once again we have a new review for you guys on a recently released indie title, Rick Remender title, instead of an omnibus, which is none other than The Scumbag, the deluxe edition by Rick Remender. Before we get into any details of the book, a quick reminder that if you are looking for this book or any of the other books that I've reviewed, to use the channel sponsor, organicpricebooks.com. Use the discount code STAYNERDY for $2 off your order. Or if you're ordering three or more books, you can use the code STAYNERDY, ship it together for 5% off that order. Also, for my manga lovers, I am a Write Stuff affiliate, so you can head into the description and use my link to help support the channel. Both the codes for organic price books as well as the link for Write Stuff is a great way to help support the channel in general for those of you that would like to do so. But let's go ahead and jump into the details of the book. So this does have a cover price of $49.99, so $50. It is the size of an absolute, so that is pretty decent bang for your buck as far as the way that this story is collected. And it does have a page count of 424 pages. Had to double check the page count over there. Um, so it's not a massive book. It's not a, on a omnibus level of scale as far as the page count goes, but it is a fairly dense story. Obviously, we just reviewed Ta-Nehisi Coates' Omnibus, which was fairly political as far as the world of Marvel, and this book is also political, so be prepared for those of you that are not huge fans of that, but I figured why not continue the theme and get them both done in the same week. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the art and talk a little bit about the story. And here we are, the Scumbag, the Deluxe Edition, a Remender book, so it is massive in scale. Um, just as a comparison, here is a Marvel Omnibus, which I just did a review on. Um, so definitely a large book in general. Um, all Remender books are this size, so you get a decent bang for your buck. But let's go ahead and kind of flip around the book, at least the outside, and see what we have here. Taking a quick look at the spine, which is fairly simplistic, and taking a quick look at the back. Or you get some original art as well but there's not too much to talk about just because there's no dust jacket or anything so let's go ahead and get into the book and talk a little bit about the story and the art let's get right into the book so we do have some orange end pages here and then we get some white end pages and then a simplistic title page make sure the book is centered there and then we do get the creators um, obviously everything is written by rick remender throughout this book but make note of how often it does change artists. For my viewers that are not fans of artist changes, it is pretty jarring from issue to issue, so just be prepared for that when going in. It somewhat makes sense if you think about it when you get to the ending, but we're not even really going to hit on that um, to avoid spoilers, but it is somewhat worth mentioning. And then continuing on, we get another, I guess, somewhat title page there, and then you get the first issue, obviously with a book like The Scumbag, you are probably not expecting very um, clean things to be taking place, and that's exactly what happens throughout this book, so viewers' discretion is advised. A lot of nudity and drug use throughout this book, so be prepared. But this is a remainder title as far as what we all kind of come to know Rick Remender as which is kind of just a out-of-the-box thinker, and that's exactly what you have here taking place. You have Ernie Ray Clementine, who is a drug-addicted, horrible person to <laughs> describe him loosely, and he actually gets somehow, due to plot reasons, which I'm not going to allude to, receives government-made superpowers that almost in a lot of ways cause him to be borderline superman with heat vision hand lasers flight super speed just to name a few but the only catch is that his powers only work if he believes what he's doing is noble so that within itself is already a amazing draw in as far as the story but as if a super powered scumbag wasn't already Interesting enough, this scumbag has also been given the responsibility of saving the world from 
for lack of a better term, politics in general, as well as technology. There, that is a broad assumption or a broad brush of the story that takes place, but the less I say about it, <laughs> we're, we're really hitting some strides here as far as the nudity, but um, the less I say about the book, the better. Um, it's honestly, let me turn this a little bit for the glare. <clears throat> it's honestly a very political book. And for those of you that don't like politics in your book, this is probably not the book for you, not the story for you. So if you are interested in checking this out, definitely be aware that politics do play a very large point in this book. Real life events such as the quarantine and everything like that also plays a point in this book. So be extremely aware of that. I am typically, as a reader, someone that accepts that politics and comic books in a lot of ways go hand in hand. But nine times out of 10, there is nuance applied to the political plot points that are used. They are mirrors of maybe some real life events or real life ideologies, but not on the nose. But this book is 100% on the nose, and you can 100% tell what he is alluding to when he kind of, sorry guys, <laughs> hints to certain aspects of the political climate of the United States. Now, one interesting concept of this book is that he does not really lean too heavily towards any one side. He vilifies both sides for the negative aspects of each side but he also does champion certain aspects of them as well saying that the true solution is indeed somewhere in the middle and not on the left or on the right which is an interesting aspect that i have not seen comic book creators do too often nine times out of ten if the polit politics in a comic book are political um, you can tell what side the writer or the creator is kind of leaning more towards. But this one is, or this book, this creator during this book at least, is definitely right down the middle and has a lot of fun making fun of both sides. And honestly, you can tell a lot of frustration coming from Rick Remender during the writing of this book and just how probably annoyed he was maybe even during the quarantine, watching the lunacy that we all were watching during that time period on his television. And you definitely get a feeling of anger, of resentment towards politics while reading this book. So I think it's a very interesting and ambitious read because, as I touched on, usually politics tend to lean more one side or the other, especially more modern comic books these days. And it is very much on the nose, very similar to this. But his writing in this is on the nose, but directly down the middle, which I think is a very nice touch. It feels very, very similar to that of Alan Moore back in the day, where he would personify ideologies of both sides and allow the reader to kind of choose what they believe in or what route they would go in as a reader. And I definitely enjoyed that. I'm not a huge fan, as I said, of on-the-nose politics in comic books. I don't mind politics in comic books in general, just not on the nose because I sometimes do feel like it can be a little bit lazy of writing, as well as me using comic books as a form of escapism. So real-life events and ideologies taking place in comic books can sometimes drive me off a little bit if I'm not in the right mindset to read. But... This is definitely something I would recommend everyone to read just because of the way that he navigates politics and how it does cause you to think a lot into both sides, which I think is a rare thing that comic books or any any meat form of media kind of allows us to do. But obviously it sounds like I'm talking a lot about politics during this book, but that's honestly mainly because that is a huge focal point of this book so obviously this is not a political channel this channel is about comic books but this comic book is about politics so it's kind of a odd line that has to be crossed here for this specific comic but still such a great read beginning 
in the beginning, my reading experience was not so great, but it did grow on me. And honestly, when it came to the end, I, I was absolutely blown away. And I think a lot of you guys will be too, but I'm going to stop here just so there's no spoilers when it comes to what happens at the end or how this series comes to an end, because I think if you go in blind and don't know what's going to happen, it will totally knock your socks off and leave you with your jaw dropped. So we will end here and we'll close the book and go ahead and head back to the table for some closing thoughts and my rating. Welcome back nerds and nerdettes. So I had a very love hate relationship with this book that was very much like a roller coaster. I, as I touched on during the overhead shots, am not a huge fan of on the nose politics in comic books. Politics and comic books do often go hand in hand, but nine times out of 10, there's some nuance or there's some creative application when it comes to the politics in comic books, but this is very much on the nose, very much. I cannot be uh, any more clear about that, but typically I'm not a huge fan of that. So my initial reading experience, I found myself not enjoying the book at all, almost putting it down just because it was too close to reality. It was too grounded in reality, if you will. I am a fan of capes and crusaders and superheroes. So obviously comic books are more of a form of escapism for me. So when it does mirror or resemble life to that point where it's literally the exact problems and issues that we see on the news every day, it can somewhat deter me. And that's exactly what this book was doing until around the halfway point, I want to say, uh, before or maybe a little after the halfway point and it completely pulled me in. Rick Remender does a very interesting thing, which is he actually critiques both sides of the political spectrum and dives deep into not only the merits of both sides, but also the negatives of both sides and how the tribal mindset of choosing sides in general does not allow a solution to be found because a true solution is somewhere in the middle I think that is so ambitious as a writer because typically you can tell which way creators are trying to, uh, I guess, push you towards during their story based on whatever their own thought process or ideology is. But Rick Remender definitely stays straight down the middle and critiques both sides, which I haven't really seen in comic books at all, at least to this level. So I definitely commend him for that. That was very ambitious and something I haven't seen. So that's awesome. Also, the art throughout the book is very interesting at times, sometimes even beautiful, but it is extremely jarring going from creator to creator because it is not fluid at all. Some styles are drastically different from the style before it so definitely expect that as well some look almost picture realistic while others look like paintings and then others after that look like a comic book so it definitely bounce a little bounces a little all over the place as far as the art pertains um at no point did i think the story was bogging down or had issues or scenes that weren't necessarily or didn't necessarily need it to be included. One thing that is worth mentioning though, as far as the story goes, is that this is extremely, extremely mature content. There's a lot of nudity and violence throughout this book, as well as touching on a lot of triggering political subjects. So you have to be in the right mindset as well as the right age to kind of dive into this book in general. Also, for those of you that are not huge fans of potty humor, there's a lot of potty humor through this as well, um, especially during the first half of the book. So if you're not a huge fan of, you know, almost childish like jokes, then you may want to stay away from this as well. But I very much enjoyed my reading experience, especially after the halfway point and the ending alone, very similar to the end league, which I kind of think I rated a little too high. So I may have to revisit that one, but very similar to end league, the ending just wrapped everything together with a beautiful bow and knocked my socks off. I mean, I could not believe the way that this book ended, but absolutely awesome. I very much enjoyed my reading experience. So all in all, I am going to give it a 8.2 out of 10. I think it is definitely not for anybody, but if you go into it with a open mind and also the mindset of 
allowing maybe some of your opinions and ideologies to be questioned. I think you'll come out on the other side, not only learning a lot of lessons, but also just enjoying the story overall. And I highly recommend everyone to at least read this, if not for the stories, then at least for the lessons that are contained within. But that does wrap up today's review. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Sorry for the back-to-back -back political um, stories and comic books. I know there's kind of a division in the community of who likes political comic books and who doesn't. So I'm sorry if you are if you lean more on the side of not liking it. But it's definitely a bur book, wor burk, book worth talking about. And it's a Rick Remender title. These books are beautiful. My favorite format out there. So... I had to talk about with you guys, let you guys see the beauty of this book. But comment down below, let me know if you guys read The Scumbag, what you guys thought of the review, if it's something that you would be interested in, or if you now plan to pick it up. I'd love to hear from you guys and hear your opinions. Also, if you are not part of the Loom Nerdy, hit that subscribe button. And if you could do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button, we are trying to hit our next milestone, which is a thousand subscribers. We're at, at the point of shooting this, 933 subscribers, so we are just almost there. So with you guys' help, we can reach that milestone. And if you did enjoy today's video and you want to be notified anytime this channel puts out more content, then hit that bell icon, that way you can get notified anytime content is uploaded. But once again, thank you so much for watching, guys. I truly appreciate it, and of course, as always, stay nerdy.